Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So today I wanted to introduce some of you. You might not know uh, what the, the Matthew effect is or what feedback loops. Uh, so has anyone uh, not heard of the Matthew effect? The, the Matthew effect in summary, uh, you know, I'll, I'll put in a little, a little thing here is that those who have more get more and those that have less, uh, e even what they have is taken from them. And it's, it's a very, very, very interesting concept. And, uh, and if I was to put, you know, 10 of my best principles together, the, the Matthew effect would be one of the, one of the principles. You think about why is it that so few have so much? And we have a lot of talk about this, I guess, in the world. Uh, uh, however, it's not a new thing. And it's not just a thing for humans either. Uh, there are, once someone starts getting more, they end up with more. Okay. Once they start getting more, they end up with more. And and so let's talk about that. If you think about all of the, the classical music that, um, that people listen to, there's really only, you know, four or five greats, you know, uh, of classical music. If you think about all of the people who have ever painted artwork across human uh, history, there's really only a very small group that have all the fame and success and, and their paintings sell for millions, whereas the average uh, painter uh you know we'll be lucky to sell a painting if, if you think in in other types of music all the people that that play rock music or, or or sing the very few that actually get world famous uh is uh is very 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 uh small now this is also true in in nature uh, where the the strongest in a species or the strongest gets gets to have the best shelter OK, so so here's how the effect kind of works is if if someone if, if an animal is stronger and they 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 then have access to get the the best uh, the best place to, to live. They live near some fresh water, maybe with an abundance of um, uh, food. And, uh, and and they, you know, they're going to be attractive to uh, a, a mate that is of high quality and, and high stature as well. So then, you know, this animal then has children. The children grow up with a strong, protective family with the best water, the best food. And, and so they get the best start in life. So then they get even more. Does this make sense? Whereas uh, the other one that starts off with nothing uh, ends up getting, a, you know, really the, the worst place to live. Uh, doesn't get the best food, doesn't have access to water, you know, doesn't get the best, you know, the, the most, uh, the, the strongest mate. And then because of that, they end up, you know, their, their children come in with those sort of genes, but also living in a place that's hard and don't get the best nutrition. And then because of that, then, it, you know, the separation happens. It, you know, this, this idea of inequality isn't new. And, uh, it's something that's been there for a long time. But if you think about it, like say in my industry, uh, in the personal development industry, uh, uh, I think Tony Robbins just needs to say he's putting on an event. It doesn't even have to be good anymore. Uh, you know, people are going to go to it because because of the, the field or, or the creative that's already there. Does that make sense? Does everyone understand this effect? So it's, it's called it's called the Matthew effect, and uh, and basically it comes it comes from a verse in the Bible attributed to Matthew, and um, and you know it's uh, it, it's it's very very obvious. Now, it also applies to our life. Okay, uh, it also applies to our life. It's, someone said I said I call it momentum. That, that's that's not, and I, but I'm glad you said that because it might sound like momentum. Uh, it, it's so much bigger than that. It's that that because of of uh, because they already have some, they get more. So think about it. it think about with money, okay? If, if someone has if someone has money, okay? Uh, yeah, the Matthew effect. That's right. I, I did. I've typed it. In. So if someone has money, 
then they're able to, to make sure that they, you know, have a good life and, and things like that. They're able to make sure that their kids are, are getting the right nutrition. And then the right nutrition means that they're able to develop to their full capacity, um, you know, get the right teachers, tutoring, these sort of things. So then the, the, the kid grows up and is now in, far, in a far greater position than the equal person who didn't have that same upbringing. Does that make sense? And, and so it, it allows this idea that, the, that once you have something, more of it will, will be there. Similar in, in weight loss. Con consider this when you're losing weight. Where, when you're really unfit, you can only work out so hard. But as you work out, you get a little bit more fitness, a little bit more strength, which means you can work out harder. True. And because you can work out harder, that means you then are able to lose more weight. But as you work out harder, you get fitter. So then you can work out even harder. So then you're able to lose even more. Do you, do you see that, guys? Like it's like the person just starting, it, it, it builds and, it, and it's allowed to, to really create this. But then the person who does nothing, when they, they can only, so it goes in the opposite way. A person sitting around doing nothing, they, they get less fit. So when they do start, they can't even do as much. So then they, they don't walk even more. They do less exercise. They do less. They do less. And so it works in reverse and it creates this inequality. And so it's very interesting. It, it, it's this idea that is, you know, sometimes attributed to like the, you know, the Pareto principle of the 80-20 rule. But, but here, here's how it works, okay, it, is that is a feedback system. And this feedback system is, is something that, that feeds in amongst itself and it, and it fuels itself. So who's heard that sound? We've all heard the sound of a microphone near the speaker, right? And so the, the speaker, the person that's talking on the microphone got too close to the speaker. And what's happened is the, the sound coming out of the speaker has gone back into the microphone, right? Who's heard that, that squealing, gross noise, right? We all have. And, and so what happens is you, you said something, it went here out of the speaker back into the microphone. And then it kept on doing that because as it went back into the microphone, it came out of there back into the microphone and it makes that horrible noise. And the only way to stop it is to stop to, to move the microphone away so that the, the sound coming out isn't feeding back into the system. Makes sense? It's good. So it doesn't feed back in and create the loop. Now, now that's a positive feedback loop. And this is, this is very, very interesting because many of us, when we want to create... We don't realize how we can use feedback systems and feedback loops to really create success, but also how to use feedback systems and feedback loops that we are using that are actually being destructive. They're actually being destructive. And, uh, and, and many, of, many of us, you know, we want to just go, well, it's the law of attraction. Um, I just sit back and do nothing. Hey, that's kind of one of the premises of, of law of attraction. But but when you move and you start to understand some of the other principles that are out there, this, this will be a really big one. So if you, if you take an action, this action is going to get some sort of result. Now, this result will, will create a belief about you, what, uh, what it is you can do. And the belief feeds your possibility or potential. And then your possibility or potential uh, creates your action, okay? So, so for example, okay, uh, let, let's say you take an action, what, you know, one of my coaches on here, and you, you put on a webinar. And that webinar uh, gets some people showing up. And those people say, hey, this was great. And a couple of them maybe buy some coaching from you. This then has you get a belief that says, hey, like I'm, I, you know, webinars and doing that's a good thing. So then this increases your possibility or your potential. You go, oh, okay, well, that's really great. So now you want to put on another one because it felt good. Does that make sense? Same with the gym. So, you, you, you know, you go to the gym for a week and you, you lose a bit of weight. And so your belief goes, hey, this is, uh, that was good. This is good. So that increases your potential. You take the action and it feeds in. What, what we don't understand is that just like the microphone, 
This feeds into itself. Just like the microphone, this feeds in. It's a loop, you see? Then you wanna take more action so you get another result which increases your belief. When I've coached people to make money, just having the result of having some money saved at the end of the week, they just have some money saved. Then they go, oh, I believe I'm, a, I'm someone who can save money. So then they save it again. And then there's now more money. And then they might invest that money and it grows. And, it gr and it's like this amazing feedback loop, feedback system from something very, very small. Something very small. Now this, the same thing, the same effect can happen in reverse. Can happen in reverse. What's an action that's going away from your creation? See, this can happen in reverse because we all know that we have a current reality, a desired reality, and then we have some sort of egoic agenda. Now, if we take action towards our desired result, that's going to have a good feedback loop. But if we, if we take action that serves our egoic agenda, guess what happens? You're stuck in a loop that keeps wanting to feed the egoic agenda. So what's an action that feeds the egoic agenda? So in, instead of going out on a date, which is what you need to do to, to meet someone, instead you say, oh, you know, I can't do that. I, I need to, you know, I need to go lose some weight. So you feed the egoic agenda. But what do you really say to yourself? You say to yourself, well, I'm not good enough to go on the date. So then the result is, well, I'm not good enough to go on that date. So then that has a belief which increases that, that same identity. You see? So you just become about fixing yourself. So this same feedback loop can work in both ways. It can work for you to get more of being a person who's in the action of the desired result, or you become more of the person serving the egoic agenda, uh, trying to fix themselves. You see, we, we think, oh, it's just one action. Oh, you know, I'm just going to put it off once. I'm just, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to do this once. Don't we? Don't we do that? Oh, I'm just, yeah, I'm just not going to go to the gym this once. I'll do it. We, we think it's small, don't we? Don't we? We think it's small. Oh, no, I just need to make it one more slide right. Oh, I just need to learn a bit more. I need just, do you see that? Don't we? Don't we do this? Yeah, we, we, we say, oh, it's just this small, you know, our ego says, no, I'll just get this right. I'm a little bit scared. Oh, I'll wait till I've lost a little bit more weight. Or, uh, you know, we feed, we feed it. And, and here's the problem is, is we think it's small. We think it's a small once off. But that action feeds a result. And the result is, oh, well, that felt good. It felt good not to follow my heart. And so we believe, oh, I, I you know, we, the belief gets built, oh, you know, it, it feels good to not follow my heart. It feels, see that? The belief, it's not good to follow my heart. The possibility of following your heart diminishes. And then because the possibility of not following our heart diminishes, Guess what? We take less action, which means our result is less. And, and what happens is there's these really, really, really capable people that I meet. And they're just stuck in this crazy feedback loop, like that microphone guy, you know, that noise. And, and, it, and it's, a, it's, a, it's these, it was just something small. And there's something small just built this belief. And it was like a snowball. It was like a snowball and it fed back on itself and fed back on itself. And then they got less and then they got less and they got less and got less. And they asked, well, uh, uh, Chris, you know, well, you're, you're here. I'm so far away. How did, how did you do that? I need, and then they think that they've got to go from all the way back here to try to get here. Don't they? They say, well, now I'm going to try to do it all at once. Einstein said, you know, the eighth wonder of the world is compounding interest. Well, the feedback system. So, so, so here's the key. 
You take one small action. So my question is, is for what you're trying to create right now, what is one small action that you can take today? That as you take it, you go, yes, look, look at that. Look what I am. Builds a belief. And then an action tomorrow builds a belief. Builds it forward. The feedback loop keeps going. And then all of a sudden, this, this feedback system, because you've got more, you're given more. You see, because you do more, you get more. So, so it, it is very true. Thanks for typing it in. Is this true? Who's, who's going, wow, I get this. I really get this. So you can be feeding. You can be feeding uh, your egoic agenda or your end result. Eat whatever you do is going to lead to a result. True. Life is an action sport. You, you cannot avoid this. Even inaction is an action. Even inaction is action. It's called resting <laughs> or avoiding. It's an action. You do it. So you can't avoid it. So you must ask yourself, are my actions today in service of what I'm creating? Or are my actions today in service of my egoic agenda? Because the answer to that question will let you know the result that will come from that. And that will show you what belief you're going to create, which will either increase or, or decrease your possibility. So my, are my actions in service? in service of my desired reality or are my actions in service of my egoic agenda? Does that make sense? What is my action in service of? Because as the Matthew effect says that the, those who have will be given more. And, and so the one place that, that you can focus on is taking the action. You take the action in spite of fear. Let's say you got fear. Let's say you're scared of it. Let's say you're scared of taking an action. Okay, just think, just, just think about that, okay? Let's say that you're scared of taking an action. Let's say you're, you're frightened of it, and then you bloody do it. And then you do it. How do you feel? You're scared of it, and then you do it. Think of, just notice how you feel. You've all done it before. You've been scared of something, then you do it. What happens to you? What happens to you? What do you believe about yourself? Well, I can do it. How do you feel when you're scared of it, but you do it anyway? You know it needs to be done. You're scared of it. You do it. How do you feel? Just feel that. Just tune into the field of, of that. You've all done that before. Just, just tune into the field of that. I was scared of it then. Then I became bigger than my fear, and I did it. How does it feel? Feel that resonance. I did it. You know, I was so scared of doing that video. I was so scared of walking up and saying hi. I was so scared to ask for the promotion and I did it. You know, and if I, I, I did it. See, see that the result doesn't matter because the result is what do you become? Someone that's bigger than their fear. Isn't it true? You're bigger than it. Okay, so, so now put this in a different perspective. Let's say you've got fear, okay? And, and you, instead of doing what you need to do, you run to heal the fear. Think about it. You go and you heal the fear. You heal it. Okay, so that's the action you take. Just notice how you feel. You take the action and you go heal the fear. And you do. There's no more fear anymore. But what do you believe? What do you believe? Notice it. Hey, what do you believe? What, what happens there? Notice the different vibe. True? 
the fear was bigger than you. Isn't it true? The fear was big. I had to go. I had to go deal with that. Isn't that interesting? Just think about that, though. Oh, I had to go do this. So put it another way. So, so you got the fear and, uh, you, you know, you know what you should do, but you think you don't know enough. So you go take a course. What does it do? What does it do in your psyche? You know, you know what you need to do, but you, you, you know, you go do something to get ready to do it. Just, just, you know, you, you think about the fear and you don't do anything. You, you see, the only obvious, the only obvious thing is, is, is to do it. Hey, because the, what you, did you notice how it built? Whereas uh, uh, all the other options, okay, you can all feel the feedback loop, can't you? So there's a thing you must do and you, you know, it's frightening. And, uh, but you know, you must do it. And instead you go over here and, you know, you, you do something else. Interesting, hey? So we can all feel this feedback loop. That, but that's, that's how dangerous um, the silent instructions are that we give ourselves. That's how, and, and dangerous that um, they, they, they rob, they rob you of, of, your, of who you're becoming. Right? They rob you. And so we live in it. We live, we're, we're a feedback based creature. You know, we, we, we always, you know, we, we're getting feedback and we're, we're defining ourselves based on what we do. You see, we're defining ourselves. We're constantly, you know, becoming someone new in every moment. And this feedback loop like that microphone works, whether you, you know, it feeds back into itself, whether or not you want it to. And the loudest instruction, the thing that's screaming the loudest, the highest form of communication, the highest information is your behavior. You see, is your behavior, you know? So, so say you want to write a book and you go, I don't know how to write a book, but you start writing a book. You start doing it, you know? And what, what does that tell yourself? Oh, I'm, I'm this type of person. That's, that's who I am. Great. Well, now I'm writing my book. Maybe I want to get some mentors and get some help versus I'm writing a book. I don't know how to write a book. I'm scared of starting. Uh, who can teach me? How can I avoid this by learning something? You see, so, so it's, it's, all about, it's all about that seed of, of that feedback system and getting into it. And, and that's, that's very, very important. The Matthew effect shows us that those that have more get more. And it all starts with you and your action. And, and this system, this, this feedback system can be working for you or against you. It can be working for you or against you. So here's the, here's the message is all aspects of you are listening all the time. Your self-conscious, uh, unconscious or subconscious and your... Uh, and your superconscious are always listening. They're always listening. They're listening. They're, they're, and they want to know how it is. They want to know how it is. And so when you, when you do, don't do something or you do something, you must remember is that you are giving silent instructions to all aspects of you. You're giving silent instructions, okay? So, so in order for you to make sure that this feedback loop and this feedback system works for you, is that you must be in the game. You must be moving towards what you're creating as you're using the superconscious. You must not be sitting here trying to get ready to start. It's a very, very big difference. When you're in the game and you're using super conscious and recode and you're doing what's necessary and you're, you're doing it and you're doing it and you're going for it and you're in the game, you know, because you're facing fears every single day. You see, you're going for it every single day. At the end of each day, when you do your lenses, you think, was there anything else I could have done 
No, no, I left it all out there. You're saying I love you first. You're making magic moments with your family. You're having the tough conversations. You're, you're in the game. You're in it you're, you're ta and you're taking the action, you're moving. And then you're using this amazing, amazing work while you're in the game. And if you, you know, if there's ever something that you must do, what's obvious is that you, you, you must take that action. Because if you don't take the action, the instruction of not, the, the instruction that you give yourself of not taking the action will be stronger than any recode. The invisible or silent instruction that you give yourself by not taking the action will be stronger than any recode. Be stronger than any recode. Why? because the identity is saying, I must be here and be fixed. You see, you must be in the creative structure and the creative structure is creating. And as it's creating, it's coming up against itself. You see, it's coming up against resistance and it's overcoming those boulders, that resistance, you see. You must be in the creative act because if you are not, the instruction you're giving yourself is far greater than any recode. And the instruction you're giving yourself is, I can't have what I want until I fix myself. Does that make sense? I can't have what I want until I fix myself. And I want to say with love, it's the biggest mistake it's the biggest mistake I, I see in, in our groups is, is, is people avoiding the action to, to do the work. Does that make sense? Avoiding what they must do. It, it's, it, you know, it, it's, it's the, um, let's call it reality bypassing. And, and it's, a, it's a hangover from, from other groups and other work you've done that is, has told you that you, know, you, you must do work and that doing work gets you results in life. True? So it's not your fault, is it? But you have been told that, you know, you must do the work, you must get prepared, you must, no, no, you, you must be in the game, hey. You, you, must, you must be moving towards it. Otherwise, you run the risk of the silent instruction building an identity that you must fix yourself. You see, we bypass life, you know. There was a funny, uh, uh, a funny um, post yesterday and uh, someone, someone had put on Facebook and they said, if you, if you sleep, uh, if you do deep breathing for 20 minutes, um, a deep breathing for 20 minutes before going to, to, to bed, you'll sleep better. You know, and it was like, yeah, but, but 20 minutes a day times 365 days is about 700 hours, 700 minutes or about 120 hours a year. So, you know, that's, that's deep breathing for, um, for six days of your life a year. Let's say you, you, know, say you live to uh, 60 years old. Well, six days times 60, that's 360. So over 60 years. Uh, you wasted a year just sitting there breathing. And, and so, you know, you, you lost, you lost a whole year. So, so, so the, the, the point is, uh, the, the, the point is, is, is that you, you must, you must realize the instructions. Uh, hey, James, good to see you on. Uh, the instructions that you're giving yourself and, and you must realize the, uh, the, that, that you got to be in the game. You got to be moving towards it. You got to be going for it. Uh, hey, charity. And, and that is when you're, when you're doing it, that is, that is when we connect to the super conscious and, uh, and we, we let go of what's in, what's in the way. You do not need to do something in order to do something. 
Does that make sense? You don't need to go and do the breathing in order to do the sleeping. Just do the sleeping. You don't, you know, you don't need to, uh, you don't need to, to, to get everything right to go and start. Because the aspect of you that is broken or not right isn't the aspect of you that will create. And the more power you put into it, the more like the microphone, it will just get louder and louder and louder. So, so is, is point, point made, point taken, that if, if you're not in the game, if you're not in the act of doing it, no, no recode can help you. True? No recode, no recode can help you. And, and we must acknowledge the reason why it can't help you is because you're creating a, a, a secondary intention in the field that says, I, I can't act until I'm fixed. So as you're taking action, it will become obvious what's needed. So as you go out there and try the sales call and fail, it becomes obvious that you might need to get a script. Does this make sense? It, it, you go to the gym and you start, you start exercising and it becomes obvious that, that you need a, a training program. You see? But you, you go do it. You trust your own natural instincts first. Does that make sense? What do most of us do? We go, I want to do this. Well, who can tell me? Does that make sense? You must be in it. You must be going for it. Because guess what? What if you surprise yourself? When, uh, this is an important point. When do you give yourself the opportunity just to surprise yourself with your own natural genius? How often do you give yourself a chance to surprise yourself with your own natural genius at how to do it? Isn't it interesting? Uh, how, how often do you just say, well, I'm going to go and do it. And I'm not going to get any instruction. I'm just going to go do it. Because I'm, I'm, I'm connected. I know how to do things. True? Because we don't, do we? And so as we do it, it becomes obvious, hey, uh, as I'm doing this, I, I come up against this fear. Then that then can get recode because you're in it. You're not making up what's in the way. You're not making up what's in the way. You're, you're doing it and, you're, and you're, you're facing yourself and you go, oh, this is what I need to recode. That's when this work is powerful. Hey, very powerful. When you, when you trust you and you go for it. That's awesome. Mary. So we're going to do recode. But we're going to do recode today. And focus in areas that you're moving, in areas that are flowing, and to remove what's in the way of things you're already already in it. Does that sound good? Let me get, I'm going to, I'll put my desk down. Um, let's do recode. Let's, let's, let's tune into a choice. So uh, everyone, let's find a choice. What choice do you want to work on today? A choice you'd like to see manifest, a choice you would love to have the feedback loop, loop back really fast. Let me know when you've got the choice you want to work on. If you're brand new, if you're brand new, just choose one of the, um, the core four choices. So if you don't have your choices written out yet, um, at the, the core four health and vibrant body, uh, healthy and vibrant body, uh, end result of living my true nature and purpose, being the predominant creative force, and I uh, choose a life I love. Cool. Very cool. Nice, Heather. Cool. Very cool. Anyway, so um, beautiful, Elizabeth. Nice, Victoria. Nice. As soon as possible. When people always ask me about what time they should put on choices, I always just say as fast as possible. The word as possible means that you can't force it. Cool. Okay, so I, I think everyone's got one. I think everyone's got one. Cool. Something that you're moving towards. Uh, you, you know, you should have 
you should have about 10 choices uh, that, uh, that you're working on, which is, which is good. Should have about 10, 10 choices you're working on. Cool. So when you when you're ready, uh, let's. Nice, Wendell. Uh, Marion's got a good question. Uh, can I use getting the job I'm going job I'm going for as a step towards the life I love? Y yes and no. Yes and no. But I, I would stick with no. You, you should be able to have a life you love without the job. Does that make sense? And so I would choose to have the job, to have the job, you see, for no other reason than you would love to have that job. Does that make sense, Marion? It, it, but, but then I'd also have another choice of choosing a life I love, which is just choosing a life I love, you see. One of the ways that we create a dysfunctional choice is when we say, I need to have this to get this. So really good question. Um, but I also get how, how it, they are connected. Everything is connected to those first four. You know, you could say, I need the job to have a healthy and vibrant body. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so anyway, the, the, the core four are, are great. And so we can start there. So, so someone's typed in, uh, I choose to gain better finances as soon as possible. So let's just choose the end result, like let, you know, um, an abundance, an abundance of money, you know, as fast as possible. That's a good choice. But, but, but getting better, it doesn't even sound like, the, like, a, like a true destination. The reason why I write, have you write the end result is many people, they, I've even seen some others try to add coaching to, to my um, thing. They say, you don't need to write end result, just write I choose. And, and uh, I disagree. You know, you, you write end result because it reminds you that this is the final destination and that there will be many steps to get there. You see, because the, the, end, the end result is, is, this, is, this, is where it will, this is the end of the creation. This is how it will be in reality. Um, you know, I, I choose blah, blah, blah. Feel, feels like, um, feels like we, we don't associate it as well. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, so so um, um, here this typed in a good question. I choose the end result of trusting my intuition. You know, I would say there's a better way to write that. So let's do a little bit of a workshop on this. OK, I because uh, because I know Heather, and I know she'll appreciate it is. So so the end result that I got asked was I choose the end result of trusting my intuition. What silent instruction uh, or um, negative belief do you do you hear that is written into that choice? Yeah, Wendy, yeah, no, but let it, we'll use it as a coaching thing. That I don't trust. Yeah, look, everyone's typing in, yeah. So I, I don't trust it. Yeah. And, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to be perfect. I'm gonna try to be perfect. So so here's here's what I would like you to, to write it as. Is is I, I choose to be intuitive. You see? Do you see that? Do you see that? There's no extra words needed, is there? I choose to be intuitive. Thanks, Heather. Great and great, great teaching moment, wasn't it? Um, yeah, nice. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. So 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 we're able to see. So when you when you look at your choice, okay, is uh, is is just to is just to make sure that it's pure, hey. It's just, it's just a pure choice. That's it. And, and there's no, it doesn't make your life. It's just, you just would love that. And, and there's, there's, a, no, there's no reason. Very cool. Yeah, Mary, uh, you just say, I choose a life I love. And uh, it will come to you about loving your life. There's no, there's no reason you can't love your life every moment, every day. No reason. No reason.
Yeah, just uh, Deb, Debra's got a question. Um, I choose the end result of having my own safe, secure place to live. Yeah, why, why not just, just say I, I choose the end, res, end result? Um, yeah, yeah, of a, of a home, a safe, safe and secure um, place to live, yeah. That's what you choose it. It, feel, it feels good. That's what I'm choosing, a beautiful home. Yeah, a loving home. You know, a, a part of me as I read it does feel a little bit like there's something you're trying to um, get away from. So if you weren't getting away from anything, what are you really wanting to create? My perfect home. You know, my love, my 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 home of um, yeah. Cool. Um, Christopher asks, uh, why start out with the, with the only with four? Ma mainly because people haven't got their other choices right, and until you're living the core four, uh, you're not really ready because you'll typically create choices that uh, to solve what's already in those four so for example uh you know they they choose something that they think will make their life something that they can love because they don't think that they love their life or they will they will choose to get rid of anger say I, or i choose to be trusting and, and they're therefore they're not being the predominant creative force you see or they say i choose to live my true nature and they're not living their truest nature and purpose you know, uh, that, so they're creating choices to, 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 to compensate for that or health and vitality. So, so that's why is, is until, until you're living those four, the, the common theme is to just have choices um, that are compensating. So I normally say, look, start with those. And I also know a self-conscious ego uh, wants other choices as well. So, you, you know, you don't just stay with them. In the in the perfect in the perfect way of coaching, um, we could coach on those core four for months, for months until we truly had those. Uh, and you know, we all we all have uh, self conscious brains that want to create other things faster than that. So, so that's uh, that's fun.